again, shall we? Yesterday, I released this exact same movie review, but my phone, for some reason, when it did this update that it was forced to do, I couldn't make it not update, it turned my recording to internal only and not external. So obviously, you wouldn't be able to hear me. All you would hear is what my photo gallery sounds like, and there is no noise to the photo gallery, so it kind of made a lousy review. So, who's up for round two? Here we go. The Current War. I actually found it enjoyable. I'll actually probably end up seeing it again in the theaters because my dad actually wants to see it after I told him about it. Uh, it's one of those movies where it feels refreshing because all we've gotten lately, or at least the movies I've seen, are these big st world stakes and the, there's not that much uh, human interest to the movie. It's mostly just the set pieces and how it looks. That's probably why I enjoyed movies like Once Upon a Time in America and Hollywood so much this year, and even The Joker, because it has the comic book characters that I like, but it also has the smaller settings, the more personal human interest. And it's also not boring, something like... That's why I was shocked I didn't like the movie, a movie like uh, The Professor and a Madman. I thought that movie was freaking boring. When you think, I would love to have a movie, because A, it's history, and B, it's human interest, but... I didn't like it. This one in your hand I actually liked. I mean, not like I didn't like the actors. Like, I love Sean Penn and uh, Mel Gibson. These guys, three good actors, one bad one. I personally don't like Tom Holland. I've hated him everything he's in, except for this movie. Although he's not really in it very much, so I think that might be the thing. But Nicholas Holt, Benedict Cumberbatch, and uh, Michael Shannon, only reason I know their names is because it's right there on the poster, all did wonderful in their roles. I mean, I know who, which ones are which, obviously. But uh, they all did great jobs. Even uh, Hol even Holland did a good job. And they did uh, well in story-wise, you know, pointing out how uh, Edison was actually kind of a dick in real life. He wasn't, like, the great guy that we were all taught to believe when we were in early elementary school back in, like, the uh, late 80s, early 90s. And how he uh, he kind of became his own worst enemy in this. Because if he had just taken the meeting with uh, Westinghouse, nothing, nothing would have happened. And if he had just treated uh, Tesla better, not like a just an employee, but as an equal, because he saw how brilliant his mind was, he would have won the war that they were in, the power, the power war. And the director of this movie, I mean, I know the uh, studio that made it went bankrupt, but I think he did a great job. It's like, I love the scene where uh, Edison's finally had enough, and he knows he's lost the war, he's lost everything, and he just takes his son down to the lab where they had the post, like on the poster you see these lights. White was Edison, red was Westinghouse. And he goes down there, and he has his son smash all the red bulbs. It's a very nice, touching scene. Because, you know, they yes, they did show Edison as the, the dick, but they also showed him as an actual... He actually cared about his family. Because he... Uh, and when his wife died, he got very depressed, and he did care about his children. And they showed him being a nice... Like a father figure to him, so... He's not... A complete villain like some people would show like some people who were like Tesla fans they would show Edison as a complete bad guy villain and, or a Westinghouse fan would show him as a complete bad guy villain but instead of just people they were all three men were people they had feelings they actually they hated people they were bad guys they were good guys and we should actually be thankful that Westinghouse and Tesla teamed up to take down Edison because if we didn't we wouldn't have the medium that was this movie was actually made on Edison, after failing at uh, being able to conquer electricity, went out and invented motion pictures. That was his next thing. That was his hobby. And his other hobby was audio recordings. He was tinkering on, on, an, auto record, on an audio recorder, and that's how he got his wife's last uh, me mentos, like words. Like, he kept on playing them over and over again. Like, he didn't want to release it to the public because he was so... He's always wanted to tinker and make sure it was perfect. So, 
he kept doing it over and over again. And when he got his wife, when he got the, actually got the recorder to work properly and recorded his wife saying how she wanted him to go out and fix the fence, but he can't. He said he replied, "I can't dig post until winter's over because you have to have the fall, the ground fall out." He kept listening to that over and over again throughout the movie after his wife died because he was just so depressed he wanted to hear her voice. And he also started working on uh, movies, so we wouldn't have cameras, sound, that type of stuff without him. So, a little thankful to Westinghouse. And they still use stuff, like GE, General Electric, that's the company. They just changed it, then they got rid of the name, because if history had played out differently and he had taken that meaning of Westinghouse, like he should have, instead of being a dick... Maybe him and Tes- him and Westinghouse would have actually teamed up and done it all together, and Tesla would have came over and gotten the job, and all three of them would have worked together. Who knows how hard it would have got? Because Tesla, one of the inventions that he's talking about in this movie that he actually did invent was the uh, what we're using now. They're just now implementing it into our technology with uh, wireless charging. He had that idea in his head, and he was playing it out on paper and everything, but he didn't get to do it because he was poor. Uh, this movie had a hell of a time trying to get to theaters. It screened at film festivals in 2017, but the, th- the company that made this movie went bankrupt. And then 101 Studios bought the rights to it and put it out, but the director recut it. Because it's actually called the director's cut, the one we're getting in theaters now, but it is five minutes shorter and it has ten additional scenes. So let that come through your head. So I'm going to guess that they probably. Uh, cut a lot of Holland scenes and added in other ones because he, he's on the poster and he's billed as one of the main actors but he's a minor character in this movie at best. It's like uh, the main characters are Tesla and Westinghouse or not West, T- Tesla Edison and Westinghouse with Tesla being the supporting characters along with the wives of the two, char- of the two male leads and uh Insole being like kind of a not really a cameo, but not like bigger than a cameo, but smaller than a guest, but smaller than a, a guest star. There you go. He's like not really in it very much, which hey, I'm thankful because I don't like Holland as an actor. You know, he's probably a better actor than I ever could be, but still, that's taking out the point. I actually like this movie enough that I designed the steelbook for it. That is the inside, and that is the outside. Obviously, I will never, uh, I'll actually, pro- I'll make it for myself, but I'll never show it to, like, you guys, except for, like, maybe an Art of the Steel, because the custom steel book that I did the first episode got panned horribly. 12 votes, 12 thumbs down, like, three thumbs up. All I got was negative comments on it, and, you know, not really worth the time. I'll be doing one more Detective Pikachu just because I already shot the whole thing. Except for, like, how the steelbook looks when its paint dries and everything. But, for the most part, I'm not going to bother with them anymore. Pe- pe- the people have spoken. They hate them. Although, er- people on Instagram seem to like my uh, designs and that. They just don't like the way it looks when they're printed out. But this one is, like, a black outside, silver inside. Kind of like with Detective Pikachu is black outside, yellow inside. Although, it's yellow on the borders. I did change it up a little bit, because originally I was going to have it be all yellow. I'm getting off topic, but sorry. But so, but then when I put the stickers on, I decided I wanted to make the borders black on top. Make it, like, nice and funky and that kind of stuff, and I put it on the back and the front. So I did that, so it looks a little better to me. Although now, my third, my third attempt when I do this, I'll definitely know to actually get all the air out from under the sticker before I paint. Before I put the sealant on, the uh, clear sealant, the shiny sealant. So, if you like History Channel, or at least Old History Channel, and stuff like Mysteries in the Museum on Travel Channel, I would highly suggest this film. If you like human interest stories, I would suggest this film. If you're tired of the sort of blockbuster type movie, and you don't want like some comedy and that kind of stuff, I would suggest this film. And it's not really playing in that many theaters. It's actually a limited release movie type thing. I'll give it a B. And... I will definitely watch it again. Thanks for watching and see you next time.